Nothing makes time stand still more than that moment before they open that envelope. And the Emmy goes to... It's like all the air is sucked out of the room and you're in this vacuum anticipating what they're about to say. And then they say it. Island, Island of the, the Sea Wolves. Accepting the Emmy, camera operator, James Freistack. And as you can imagine, we were absolutely thrilled. We could not believe it. What an honor. And in this video, I'm gonna tell you the story of how I got started as a wildlife cinematographer and ultimately how it led to me winning an Emmy. So that night was absolutely incredible. We ended up walking home with four Emmys for best sound mixing, editing, cinematography, and for writing. And we were nominated for seven. We ended up taking home four and we couldn't be more excited. And it was all for a series called Island of the Sea Wolves. If you've seen Island of the Sea Wolves, comment down below and let me know what your favorite story was in that series. And I primarily shot uh, the Vancouver Island Marmot story. I worked a lot on the wolf story and uh, shot a lot of eagles and I worked on the herring spawn. Now this was a massive undertaking and there were so many people involved. There's no way we could have done it without incredible teamwork. But I'm gonna break down my personal journey, my story on how I got to this point. And I hope that maybe you can learn a few lessons along the way. And I didn't grow up with this idea that I wanted to be a wildlife cinematographer. Actually, I, I used to work as an electrician. And uh, during my time working as an electrician, I would save up lots of money and I would take time off and I would go travel to exotic places like Thailand or Vietnam or the Philippines. And back then I was really into action sports and adventure sports. And I thought I go to all these exotic places and I have all these cool experiences, yet I never bring a camera with me. And I thought a lot about that. And that evening I headed to Best Buy and I bought myself a Nikon D3500 and I cracked open my laptop and went to YouTube immediately and started learning how to shoot photography. I thought it'd be really cool if I could be like an action sports photographer. And as time went on, I continued to travel and I started bringing my camera with me this time. And I really got into street photography and shooting a bit of action sports stuff, but I never really thought of this as being a career. My electrician job paid well and it had me, it gave me the flexibility to go travel to all these places and to be able to afford it. And then one day a friend of a friend got in touch with me. He was a National Geographic photographer and he needed somebody to assist him on this 10 day expedition up Mount Rainier. During that time, I chatted with a photographer I was assisting and he explained to me that this was gonna be his last National Geographic photography job. And I was so confused by that. You made it to National Geographic, like you've hit the big times, you're there, like why are you leaving? And he explained that he was shifting all his focus over to video production and I never even considered video. I didn't even know how to flip that dial over and start taking videos. And he explained to me that shooting photography, though it's his passion, it was really hard to make a living doing it and that video is the way forward and that um, if you want to have a stable career, maybe uh, you want to consider shooting more video. And I ended up uh, getting rid of my D3500 Nikon and, and bought a Canon 70D and started shooting more videos. But I came at it with a photographer mindset and I had to build up this whole new skill set of what it took to shoot video. It was a whole different ball game. And you know, just the simple things of like proper shutter speed and native ISOs and um, just anticipating motion and movement. It was just this whole new, skill set that I had to develop and um, I felt really lost. So again, go back to YouTube and watch video after video after video on how to shoot videos and uh, started to develop that skill. And in 2016, I got laid off from my job as an electrician and I was left with two choices. I could go find another electrician job probably pretty easily and just continue on this path doing the same thing or I could have a crack at being a photographer and a filmmaker and in that moment, it was it was a tricky situation because I didn't know, I wasn't making any money as a photographer really, or, or as a filmmaker, and I didn't really have the skill set to that anybody would actually want to pay me to do this, but I had a little bit of savings and um, I thought that I had nothing to lose. I could always go back and be an electrician and continue on that path, but I just had that curiosity of what if. And because I was laid off, I had all this free time now, and I didn't know 
what to do about you know actually making money and making a living doing this but I called up some of my climbing friends right away and uh, a friend of mine said he was heading to Denali in five weeks and was wondering if I would want to join and sure enough five weeks later after losing my job I was in Alaska climbing Denali the highest mountain in North America and that was the first project I tried to shoot as like a professional photographer in that I was going to document the whole trip and maybe write a blog post and um, yeah, I, didn't, I wasn't too sure what I was going to do with all that, but it was just my idea of like putting a project together, shooting all the details that I needed to shoot and try to put something together for maybe for a magazine or, or a blog post or something like that. And after a successful climb of Denali, we had this welcome home congratulations party. And at that party, there was this director producer guy and he was uh, into shooting natural history. And they were working on a film called Grasslands and they were filming and documenting um, wildlife in the grasslands in North America. And he knew I was into photography and camera work and um, I had this um, you know, outdoor experience that suited well for, for this industry. And he asked if uh, maybe I'd wanna be a camera assistant someday. And at this point, I'm not making any money as a photographer filmmaker. And uh, I said, absolutely, yeah, that sounds like fun. <laughs> but I didn't really know too much about that industry. But I, at this point, I'm gonna say yes to anything. And, uh, and usually those conversations don't really lead anywhere. Um, I didn't really think too much of it. But as time went on, I kept developing my skills as a photographer and started to shoot a little bit of video. And uh, one day the call came and uh, they asked if I could go out to assist this camera operator. And there I was. It was uh, my first job as a camera assistant on a natural history job. My job was to sit on this bridge with a set of binoculars and a radio and I had to wait for these falcons to uh, fly into their nest. And he was way down in this valley in this hide with his camera. And um, if I saw any of the falcons coming in towards the nest, I would have to radio him and say, hey, yeah, falcons coming in from the 12 o'clock or they're coming in from the east or they're coming in from the west. Um, and so he was able to position himself, get ready and get that shot that we're trying to get. And I sat there for 10 days just watching for birds and um, I thought, wow, I'm getting paid to do this right now. This is like the best job ever. And I ended up getting along with that camera operator really well. And I ended up assisting him on another job where we were filming the bison rut in Montana. And from that point, things just started to snowball. Once you're in and you're doing a great job and you're recommended from other people, they keep hiring you for more projects. And so from then on, every time a new job would come up, I would say my availability and say, yes, I'm available to go to this job or that job and be a camera assistant. And um, after a few years, they ended up letting me shoot uh, some behind the scenes stuff, but I still didn't really actually have great skills developed as a wildlife filmmaker. Like I still struggled with my wildlife filmmaking. And when I look back at my old hard drives, it was painful. Like my wildlife videos were terrible. And at that time, I knew I needed to develop my skills if I wanted to make that jump to become a camera operator. And at the time I had a Panasonic GH5 and I would film anything that would move. <laughs> I would film uh, ducks at the pond, I would film squirrels. Um, it didn't matter, I just knew I needed to have my camera out, I needed to be out in the field and I needed to film stuff. Those videos were absolutely painful. Like, I, I, didn't, I didn't realize how hard it actually is to get video at that quality. Um, I thought it was just point, hit the record button, and just flail around and get shots. But no, it's, it's, it's different. It, it's really hard to like, not only just get a really nice shot, but actually to tell a story. And which leads me to the first time I actually tried to assemble my own story. And I remember I was filming Great Blue Heron at a local pond not too far away from me. And I captured this moment that at the time I thought was really, really special and very unique. And it's a little bit graphic and it was a blue heron and it went and snatched his baby duck. And it was a little bit, it was pretty dramatic. And I realized at that moment, I was like, oh, that's the story, that's it. 
that's it. And so right at that moment, I just started picking off shots wherever I could. I knew I needed shots of like the little baby ducks. I needed a shot of the mom. I needed a big establisher of the pond itself. I needed shots of the heron getting closer to the ducks and then ultimately build this whole sequence out where the, the heron uh, grabs the baby duck and, and eats it whole, unfortunately. But what it was is that next stage of development of learning that it's not just one cool shot. You need to build out a whole story and how do you do that? And um, I'd like to say that gear doesn't matter, but it kind of does in a sense. And we'll get into talking about gear in, in other videos. And as my skills developed, I started to make a few of my own films. I made one called Run With The Ghost Of Giants, where I won a small, small grant of $5,000 to make this short film. It was about trail running and old growth logging. And then I made another film called Silks, which ended up getting in quite a few film festivals, which was, uh, which was quite an honor, very exciting. And then we got news that we booked this new series about wildlife on Vancouver Island. And with that series, I, I felt like, I, I, I knew, I felt like I was ready to step up and become an operator. But still, I was technically a camera assistant when we first started this project. And at this point, I'd, I'd been shooting a lot of second camera stuff, uh, some drone operator stuff, but still working as an assistant. And uh, for the first few shoots, that was primarily my role. Uh, but this is a very busy shoot with uh, a lot of camera days and a very short period of time. And I guess I was just the next one to step up from camera assistant to be the camera operator. So they trusted me with the camera and set me on my way with my own stories. I had my own camera assistant and I guess that was it. I was officially a camera operator and that was my last time working as a camera assistant. And that was a wild year. I was out in the field a lot. I had spent many weeks trying to film wolves, spending lots of time filming Vancouver Island marmots and eagles and working on the herring spawn. And there was a huge learning curve with that. And it's funny because like at the end of that series, you just drop it and then you go, okay, well, what's the next series? What's the next job? What are we going to do next? And um, at that point, everything just goes into the editing suite. You kind of detach yourself from it. You think, okay, well, what's the next series? And then I ended up working on a couple other series for Netflix and uh, for National Geographic and for BBC. When you're into the industry, it's a very small market. Um, and so when you're in, you're kind of in and your name gets tossed around and you get um, the occasional invite to work on these projects, which is um, kind of how the whole game works. But then, um, you know, like year goes by, the, the series gets released. It's, it's amazing, it's very well received. I loved it, I couldn't believe it. It just ended up being such a great series. And um, months go by and then we found out that we got nominated for seven Emmy Awards, including cinematography. And one thing we had to actually do is uh, between the cinematographers that were actually gonna go down there, we had like a virtual flip the coin on who got to say the Emmy Awards speech and it landed on me. And I was so incredibly nervous from that moment. Uh, not a day went by where I didn't think about just calling one of the other camera guys and say, hey, do you want to do this instead? I'm, I'm too nervous. <laughs> and so, but I took this on as the big challenge to myself. I'm like, okay, I could do this. And then I jumped up on that stage. I actually almost tripped. I caught my foot on the very first step getting up there and I almost stumbled my way onto the, onto the stage, uh, which would have been pretty dramatic. But then I got up there, said my speech, and then we walked off stage and I came home with an Emmy Award. Yeah, I still don't even know how to process this. And it seems surreal. Like, I won an Emmy? I have an Emmy right there? Okay. That's kind of cool. And so that's enough about me. The videos I have planned for the future are geared more towards helping you develop your skills as a wildlife filmmaker. So if you have any specific questions, please leave a comment down below. I read them all and I will respond the best I possibly can. And if you want to see a behind the scenes video that I made recently, uh, check out this video here that I have of me filming black bears on Vancouver Island.